by Jonathan Kahn. I'm Caleb Gordon, along with the Morningside band and singers. And now, direct from Gray Street at Morningside, here are your hosts, Jim and Lori Baker! Hello, everybody. Welcome to Gray Street. Hi there. We have with us again today the author of one of the best-selling books in Christianity history, The Harbinger. Woo! Rabbi Jonathan Cohn is back with us today. I think it's gone over two million now. <laughs> yeah. Copies of this book. It's like the whole Bible is pointing to this fall, this mm. period of time. Mm. And, uh, I mean, you're going to be where the action is right there in New York. <laughs> right you, next to New York City. You, you see the whole skyline, so w yeah. when it's on fire, we, you're going to see it from your church. That, well, that's how it began. Uh, seeing, we could see 9-11. That's when it began, across the water. Could see the smoke. I had to get to Renata, which we were just beginning to see each other, and she was supposed to be there, scheduled to be there at the building at 9 o'clock in the morning. And the last minute her plans were changed, that happened to several people in our <coughs> congregation. I had to go there and actually all the tolls were free because there was nothing happening. I mean, everything was shut down totally to get there. But we could see that and that's when I first prayed, Lord. And that's when it first began to come, the, the harbinger. Really, the harbinger? Yeah. Well, the very first thing, the very first thing was the, uh, that passage, that this chap, the section, the Lord showed me then the section of Isaiah 9, 10 and 9 and 10, that whole first strike warning that's what he that was the first thing that happened that week when i prayed but i didn't put it all together with that isaiah 9 10 scripture but that's when it be i knew i knew the overall i knew that overall setting later on when i was standing in new york city at ground zero and the lord just just said see that tree there and it was the remains of the tree the sycamore said there is a mystery and you have to seek this out you have to find this and that's when i had no idea what i was going to find but that's when the first puzzle piece, next one, it just kept coming and coming and coming. That's how he led me with a harbinger. What did you think as you stood on your property and looked across and saw the Twin Towers on fire, saw them ablaze? Did you actually see them collapse? No, I didn't see them collapse, I saw, I, but I saw the smoke. This was going on for that night, for the next thing. For the days? smoke going, yeah, for day, the day you could see it from almost wherever you but were. But how could, now listen to me, people, come on now. How could two of the largest buildings in the world disintegrate? How could they collapse? You know, you guys believe in miracles, but I, I, I mean, that's a miracle in a way. How could those buildings by two airplanes hit him. How in the world could those massive buildings, you were there, your wife was going to be in that tower mm. in a few minutes. Why, God, my God, my God. God trying to warn our, what is the name of those towers? Twin Towers. But what's the, real, the, the, the other name, the real world name? World Trade Center. The World Trade Center. Could that be prophetic? Why, I, would, I think why so. would that be the building? I, I think so. That was, that, they were the symbols of America's preeminence around the world of economy, economic, global, trade, all those things. All those things. When it came down, it struck the sycamore, which was the symbol of the beginning of America's rise financially. So this was a symbol, and then I believe a foreshadow, and this was the opulence of America. This was, the World Trade Center was actually conceived in 1945 when we were at the peak you know, all that, and it was to be our, we are the new center of the world, mm -hmm. you know. And so this is very symbolic. I mean, and that this, these towers also went up in the year 1973, year of the Shemitah, or that was finished, which is also the year that America began killing its unborn children. Yeah. The towers stood as a symbol of our, our glory, but it was also our shame. They stood for the years that, the, that this was happening. You know, and so I believe it's very symbolic of what that, that was, they, they, were, they were symbolic towers, you know. In the middle of the stock market. Yeah, the financial land. district where also America began as a nation, where America was dedicated to George God. George Washington stood all there. All that, all that. Where the right on that was, spot. I mean, right, right on that right ground. Right where they, the, 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 the trees came down, actually yeah. hit right there. Right, yes, yeah. <clears throat> where America was dedicated to God and where also, on a, and also that's the, de, Mark in the day, when Washington gave the prophetic warning of what would happen if we ever turned away from God. 
This is so important because if you don't live in this book, The Harbinger, and understand it, you're going to miss what God's saying and what God's doing. That's why several million people have already gotten this book. Yes. And you know what I think is a great <coughs> idea? I think you should do it immediately is get what we call a baker's dozen. Which is a, a which gift is 13 to books, and it's for a donation of $100 to the ministry. How many want to be a missionary sometimes? How many would like to preach and you don't preach? All of you can by this. Is, it is written in this book what 9-11 was saying to America. And then the other book we have is the mystery of the Shemitah. Yes. And uh, this this one here. And you you can order this one also. I believe, beside the Bible, these are the two most important now books. These are the now books. This isn't a book. This isn't a book deal. This is, this is what God is saying because so many preachers, I helped start the prosperity movement. So I'm not mocking or knocking anybody. I helped put it together in the beginning. We all thought God wanted us to prosper more than anything on earth. That was back in the 70s and 80s, and the 80s were the, you know, big, but, huge, But what's happening, time. I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, the prosperity gospel is what the Bible refers to is the other gospel, another gospel. I believe it with all my heart. And you say, why? Because the love of money is the root of all, all evil. And believe me, it's true. You know what? Something's going on. Yeah. And when I see something happening, when I begin to see God right. speaking to a whole yes. group of his people, right. something's happening. Yes. And something's going on right now. That's right. And you know, David Wilkerson spoke to this generation years ago. And literally got banned from a lot of churches because they didn't want to hear what they call doom and gloom. But you're going to share some of the things that you've discovered about Dave Wilkerson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, amazing. I mean, you know, he, there's, there's a link between David Wilkerson and the Harbinger. First of all, first of all, he's the only one, the only other one, that after 9-11, he gave a word at Times Square Church. And his word was, he, the word that he said God gave him was Isaiah 9, and then he said, he said, the bricks have fallen, but we will reveal the harbinger scripture. He preached that. You're kidding. The, uh, he this said, is... this is God's word for America, without knowing the harbingers, that most of them had not even been known or manifest, but he said that exact thing. He said, we have responded as ancient Israel, and this is where we're going, without knowing that. So he was the only other one who did that. And so there's always been this link, and we are kind of in the same neighborhood. We met once, you know, actually long before the harbinger, um, and actually when he you know, he, he went to be with the Lord, you know, um, and the next day, I got the news, the next day, I got the contract to sign the harbinger for it to go forth. It wow. was almost like, he went to be the Lord, and then this went, and I, there's something about it, and you know, wow. he, he had ideas about timing, which I, I don't believe was the timing, but it, the interesting thing is, things that he said have all gone in that direction, and now, there, I'll, I'll, before we finish you know before yes. i before i leave yes. um i'll sh there's some very striking things that are that are matching up with what where we are right now something is happening too many prophecies are coming together too many warnings too many signs in the heavens too many dates too much all together you know urgence. have you ever studied any time where there's any more pieces coming together in one time in history. I have not seen it. I have not, I have not seen all, like, it's almost like every factor, everything pointing to judgment, pointing to shaking, is happening now. From, from America's gigantic accelerating apostasy right now, to God crossing thresholds right now. We've touched upon the what, as we are here now in, in light of the Supreme Court ruling, America and Israel has never been at its, at its 
as, as horrible as it is right now, the relationship is at its worst point. The Bible says, if you bless Israel, you'll be blessed. If you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. And we are now on the verge of abandoning Israel. The administration has threatened to. Well, you abandon Israel, what happens to you? You know, you put Israel in danger, what happens to you? That's happening at the same time. These are two dangerous things at the same time. Third, it's the year of the Shemitah. This is the year that every time, the last seven times, every single one has been a crash, a collapse. And it can also mean the collapse of nations. And at the same time, we're watching even the harbingers. The last harbinger has just been being completed, that tower that, that is the, the embodiment of defiance. You know, we've defied it, now we've done it. Uh, so the tower is this great at ground zero. visual yeah. point, but... Did it have? It had to be finished. It it, it, it was, was like it, it was like we're not going to listen to God. We're rebuilding. We're going to be bigger and we're going to be better. And we don't listen to God's warning. That was it was God's warning, right? Yeah, and this is exactly doing. It's almost like the embodiment of Isaiah nine ten. We will rebuild bigger, stronger. And when is it? When did it open up? It's it's not hasn't been dedicated yet. But when did it open up? Two weeks into the Shemitah. It only in the year of the Shemitah. It was birthed it was conceived in the year of the shemitah when when tom daschle said we will rebuild from capitol hill i know that there is only the smallest measure of inspiration that can be taken from this devastation but there is a passage in the bible from isaiah that i think speaks to all of us at times like this the bricks have fallen down but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. And now it's being complete, just like the World Trade Center was conceived in the Shemitah, was finished in the Shemitah, was destroyed in the Shemitah. And so now this tower is being completed in the Shemitah as well. All these things together, I mean, so much, the harmonies, everything is converging right now. So I believe we really need to be ready. Yes. Wow. This book is, is so powerful, the Shemitah. And uh, I get to do something right now uh, to introduce to you this book. Once again, this is your third book, would you say? At, yeah, sort, of, sort of. Sort uh, of. Yeah. I mean, sort of, it's an it's a enhanced a special edition of, that, of, the, of the Mystery of the Shemitah that has the DVD with it. It's included in that. Yeah. And then... It has, a, it has a chapter that's nowhere else that gives updates of what has happened since that was not there when ah, this began. Ah. So it's the only version that has that. That's just coming out now. Of course, it's the first, first ever seen on, on the Jim Baker yeah. show. So oh, this, this is the, the brand new edition, the mystery of the Shemitah, and with the new content and the video all together. Yes. yes. And uh, this retails, let me see, look, $24.99. For a gift of $20, we're going to offer it. And, and again, we're going to use this to build the, the, the school funds Amen. to be able to give Amen. help That's to awesome. students. And so this Mystery of the Sumita, brand new. We're the first person again <laughs> to are. offer this. I, I don't know how this always ends You're, up. It wasn't, you weren't even allowed to. I mean, this, I mean the thing that's so cool is you're, you're at the cutting edge of it because I have, I did also never saw it before. This is another first time <laughs> I saw it. I have to come here. I have to come across America to see the books. But, but the Lord has given you th this opening, but this is the first time that's ever been. So. Wow. Yeah. So if you want to, there'll be the update, update right to the last moment. So for a gift of, uh, of a $20 gift, which we're going to give as the student fund to Amen. That's help awesome. support the college. So just call right now. You can ask for the Mystery of the Shemitah final update book. That's kind of scary the way you <laughs> wrote that. But uh, the word final is kind of final these days because one of these days it will be all final. And it's really selling. People... You need to read it if you haven't. You need to get ready because something big is happening. Yes. And when we went to Israel with you, yes. we met together in uh, New York, New York, New York, New York. In New Jersey, New Jersey. And we're actually across the, the, the river. river. And I don't know what hotel we stayed in. I don't know how you end up in hotels, but we were in a hotel <laughs> down by the river or somewhere. And uh, 
I, I, we arrived in, because was, we had to change planes in was, Jersey. You understand? Help us out, Sasha. So Sasha was, I go. Listen team. to this. I go to the <laughs> window of our room. I pull open the drape. What is right there? I mean, straight, right across, straight. The tower, the Freedom Tower, they call it. I guess. Now it's now they call it the One World Tower. One World Tower. Right, yeah. Oh God, that's <laughs> even worse. <laughs> They, they changed it when, when China became the first client of the tower. They changed it. And, and, the, and so a whole bunch of floors of that tower is called the China Center. Oh, I don't know what that means. Do you know what that means? <laughs> well, what, what happened... Scary to me. Well, what happened in this Shemitah is America was supplanted, dethroned as the strongest economic power by China after 140 years. But it was already in the tower. And that was the, that, that actually, we got unthrown the first day of the Shemitah. The first two weeks it was, right? it came out. The, yes. Yeah. That, yes. And, and so I'm opening, I open the drape, there's the tower and the newspapers in my room. That's right? right. Lauren? Yes. yes. Pick up the newspaper. USA Today. And I remember. There's the picture of the tower. And what is it saying? On that day, at that moment, the fish, the opening, not the grand opening, the first people moving in. That's important to Taking me. Is, is when I build stuff, to be able to move in and take occupancy. That was happening on that moment, Rabbi. God had me there in destiny, I believe, as we were going to another great destiny, the Holy Land. Yes, yes. yeah. Yeah, no accidents at all. And this is the year of the towers finishing. And one of the things, they, one of the things that happened with the tower is the, one of the first stories, once they opened it up, is the stories came out that the tower has been overrun with rats. Oh. I mean, this is a tower representing America, just like that. Uh -huh. overrun with, that, was their, that was their first thing. It wasn't just people who moved in, rats moved in. I believe God always warns before he judges. And the point of this is that this was to get out before what is coming. Before what is coming. God's people can prepare, and those who are not God's people can look afterwards and say, God is calling us. We need to get back to God. We need mm -hmm. to get to God. Yes. That's the it point. is the That's harvest the time. Yes. Yeah. I, God's heart is revival. You know. Yeah. And sometimes people ask me, is it going to be judgment or revival? And I say it can be both. There can be revival through judgment. In fact, America, I believe, has grown so deaf to the voice of God that it's going to take God sh shouting and shaking for America or for those who will to come back. That's the point. God's right. heart is redemption. We will be right back after this special message. These are multiple judgments. It will culminate in war. War on American soil. But he said to me, this is November 99, standing out in a pasture field, Toler, Texas, full moon. And he said, I will give you a national audience on television just before the judgment strikes America. Jim, nobody has invited me on television until you today. <gasps> but when things become so desperate yeah. and when things become so dire, whenever those kind of times come, they will remember Jim Baker getting on TV all those years and saying, you need to get this, friend. You need to get it while you can. One second after, mm -hmm. the food will be gone. Mm -hmm. Be gone. We're trying to store more food here. We're trying to do everything we can do to be ready to help people. Yeah. We want you to get ready. Yes, we do. Because we want to see the greatest soul winning time that the church has ever known. Our big survival food offers are back. We have teamed with leaders in the survival food industry to bring you a new variety of food while still holding down the cost for you. And so we have now this brand new food for a year for you yeah. and a year for, for two, two and, the time and then the travel which is seven years and so it's food. all ready to go mm -hmm. now each of the foods we now offer have been taste tested to make sure you get the best tasting quality food that you expect from this ministry in each of these offers you will receive buttermilk pancakes maple brown sugar oatmeal chocolate pudding morning mousse whey milk Creamy chicken and rice, hearty vegetable chicken, chicken noodle soup, creamy stroganoff, fettuccine alfredo, italiano marinara, black bean burger, 
creamy potato soup, corn chowder, macaroni and cheese, banana chips, instant white rice, and instant mashed potatoes. Don't wait until it's too late. That's yes. right. Don't wait until it's too late. Yes. Be prepared. You can receive the tasty new foods year for you offer for a donation of $600 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 1,096 servings of food. The retail value of this offer is $1,150 and is at a cost of just 55 cents per serving. You can receive the Tasty New Foods Year for Two offer for a donation of $1,100 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 2,192 servings of food in eight buckets. This offer has a retail value of $2,300 and is at a cost of just 50 cents per serving. You can receive the Tasty New Foods Time of Trouble offer for a donation of $3,500 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 7,672 servings of food in 28 buckets. This offer has a retail value of $8,055 and is at a cost of just 46 cents per serving. We can only guarantee the prices for a limited amount of time, so get this new food now. Call 1-888-988-1588 or go online to jimbakershow.com. You can also write to Jim Baker at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Thank you for your prayers and support that helps keep us broadcasting around the world. For the first time in a long, long time, we actually have generators in the warehouse. Oh, good. They That's very awesome. seldom get to the warehouse except just to be shipped out the next day. And so if you order right now, get on the phone and call right now, they, they will ship out. I know you've already used yours. You mm -hmm. finally figured out how to use <laughs> it, right? <laughs> during, during Sandy, during Hurricane Sandy, when we were wiped out totally, there was no gas, there was no light. And, uh, yeah, and I started, my, so I started doing it. I was doing the hand crack, and then Renata says, you know, it's not plugged in. You know, I was doing it for like five minutes. You know, you know, that's, you know Jewish that? people are not good with mechanics. You know, just, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yeah. So, but then after we got it, we, we were okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's <laughs> why I tell you, when you get your generator, <laughs> yes. guys and gals, play with it. You have my permission. Yes. Yes. Run it. Yes. Make it work. Figure it out. If you got any problem, then call our folks here. If there's anything you don't know, uh, it, it's supposed to come with a DVD with it, I think. And uh, so it has all the instructions, right. but use it. And uh, the, the little get, light is on get here. Get familiar with it, and is what you're saying. We run this light almost every day on the show just for fun. And it's plugged in only to this generation. There's, there's a cord, and it plugs right there. And it's, it has 99 hours and 59 minutes left. And that's all. That's as high as it goes. It actually can be a, more juice in it. But that's the extent of this meter that tells you. So uh, it, it shows you as the p power inside goes down. So you can look at it there. It's very simple. Been, been totally reinvented this year. But if you want one, the thing, if you live in cold country, the, you, you someday want to get a 12-volt blanket. blanket. Yes, the emergency blanket. Because yes. it can keep you from freezing to That's death. That's exactly I right. I keep one of those in my car at all times because, you know, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. And to me, it's cold here in the winter. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it, this is too ahead. cold for me. And, but, I, and actually, on, even on our, our online store, we have many different accessories for this generator. We have the emergency blanket. We even have things that will, uh, uh, cooking pots that will you cook your food. You have a pizza oven on there. We now. have a pizza it's oven. It's a little teeny pizza oven. And, you know, we just invented last week the new pizza. Yes, oh, the and people are so ordering them yeah. already. And what we did, we just, we ordered... I, I was in the night. I'm having dreams. Are you ever a pizza dream? <laughs> 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 but pizza is America's favorite food. Yes, it is. And so I figure out while well, we're out winning souls, the world's coming to an end. If the it's if the grid <laughs> collapses, we're we're going to be eating. So we don't. What does the Bible say? Well, it talks about there having to be a time with with no food to and eat. And how much do you have to work? An According to the Revelation 6? An entire day for a loaf of bread. Which is and actually, if you study that portion of Scripture, the amount for bread that's listed in, in Revelation, it actually is could be even talking about how it's hyperinflation is what caused there to be a famine because it was actually the, the, the price that was listed was 10 times the price of a normal 
loaf of bread in that day. So it could even be talking about hyperinflation. Okay, so what, I know we, we're talking about this, this generator, and the pizza oven plugs in here. If you, if you, we have a 12-volt one online. So if you go online, you can shop at our website and pick up things like blankets and cooking pots. And yes. I mean, it's, we've got so coffee pots. All there's, 12 there's all kinds fans, of things. The yes. Lori hot flash fan. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We have those. Yes. It's Thank you. Plug you, into this thing, and uh, but once any crisis happens, if it, it's over, it's over. If you haven't stocked something up, and if there's a volcano going off or whatever, you need to be able to have stock ahead of that. Yes. And it's, now, yes. unless we get this right, the harbinger, the bricks fell. Right? That was God's warning. The Jewish people said, no, we're not going to repent. We're just going to get bigger and better. Right. Is that right? Yes. Defiance. So they rebuilt. Yes. And, and didn't do what God said. Is that right? That's right. Defiance instead of repentance. And that's exactly what happened after 9-11. So what did they do next? They built. And then what did God do? Because they ignored the warning. What happens Finally, in the Bible? Mm -hmm. You don't have to say it's mm -hmm. going to happen to mm -hmm. America, mm -hmm. but what happened mm -hmm. the other time people disobeyed? What, what did What, what, what did happened God is do? God gave a grace period, a period of grace to come back or not. And then when that period was over, and this is a pattern more than once in the Bible. Many times. Happened with Judah too. First, first, came, first came this attack by Nebuchadnezzar, then years later comes the full thing. Well, with, with this, what happened is a uh, number of years later, God then says, okay, now I am withdrawing my protection entirely. And then the same ones who brought the first shaking come back, but now it's not just a temporary wake-up call, now it's the full thing. And so they come back, the Assyrians come back, and now the, na the kingdom of Israel, northern kingdom, is wiped off the face of the earth. God warned them, called to them, pleaded with them, shook them, did everything he could do. The Bible says it. And they turned from him. They rejected all of it. They rejected his prophets. They rejected the warning. And then finally it came. He lifted his hands. So what's coming next then? The harbingers, you know, as we've talked at certain times, I come back with a report. Uh, they have not stopped. They've continued. And I'll just touch on the last two. But there's okay. something more on the, the last one that just happened before I, a little while before Ooh. I came out here. And the first, just to bring it up to speed and link it even to other things. The one, the two are the tree of defiance, of hope, and the other is the tower. You know, the tree that was planted at ground zero, which was the tree of judgment, we will come back stronger, the Erez tree, planted on ground zero where the sycamore was struck down. What the, what the Jewish people, what the Israelites said, this is, our, this is a symbol of us coming back stronger, as we, I shared after, this is after the book, because when, when the book came out, it, had just, it was planted, everything was going well, but then according to the Bible, one of the signs of judgment is the tree shall wither away. The tree of hope, representing America, withered away, withered away, no matter what they tried. I found out they actually tried to put new soil, they replaced all the soil, and it still withered away. And so to, one of the signs, in, you'll see in the prophets, I will break off the boughs, I will break off the branches, you break off your glory, they broke, the tree of hope got its branches broken off because it was diseased, no matter what they did, broken all off. The president came down to ground zero, reads a, re, gives a speech with a psalm in it, a very strange thing to read because the psalm says, the one that they chose for him was, come and, he's in ground zero, and he's saying, come and see the, desolate, the devastation God has done. He reads it. And uh. then, then, he, then down that same psalm, he's going to read a blessing, which says, he, and God breaks the, bows and arrow he breaks the bow brings peace he changes the word and i believe it's just like the harbinger nobody's planning to do this nobody knows what they're doing changes it from bow b-o-w to b-o-u-g-h bow he breaks the bow which is the judgment sign of the bible he will break the bow the branches which right across from him is the tree with its branches broken he says that when the white house actually releases the text of the scripture this is in print from the white house they change the word from, from bow, bow and arrow, to bow, judgment. They actually change the scripture. It means something totally different in Hebrew. Judgment. So there, that tree. And then a year ago, one year ago, because when I first came here, it wasn't the case. Uh, one year ago, the tree of hope, representing America, its glory is destroyed. It falls, is destroyed. 
And the day it's destroyed is a Hebrew holy day. It's destroyed on Passover last year. And that the night of its destruction, the moon turns red. The night of its destruction of the harbinger comes the first blood moon. Oh. It ushers in, the harbinger's fall ushers in the blood moons, which begins Whoa. then, that same night. And now we're coming to the end of that. So you got two yes. harbingers. You have that linked to the, to the moon. Well, the other harbinger is, the, of course, the tower. That's the big one. That's what's the final one, the tower. I won't go into all of it except to say for those, because those who know here, this is where they say we will rebuild stronger. America vows to come back stronger, rebuild as ancient Israel did. The ancient Septuagint says not just we will rebuild. It says we will build, come let us build a tower. The tower, they get it from Babel. They, the rabbis put Babel on Isaiah 9:10. That is this tower of defiance, which is exactly what, I mean, John Kerry, Secretary of State, he said when he was a senator, he said, we must build that tower stronger to show the world we are defiant. Defiant. So it goes up stronger, been building, and then we, we mentioned the president comes down, he inscribes the vow basically on the top of the tower of defiance, and then when he's being inaugurated the second time, which I was here when we, that election happened, that was a tipping point. And what he does is he, the president chooses a poet who then from in the middle of the inauguration in Washington, not only does the president enlist the entire nation into ending the biblical definition of marriage in that speech, first time ever, but also the poet that he chooses says, bring, gives a poem of praise, not to God, but praise to, of our, to our own hands. And he says, we pray, the works of our hands, he's praising, giving thanks. And the final thing he says, he speaks of the harbinger at the, at the inauguration, that the tower going up, that, that is jutting it to the heavens. He's saying that the heavens yield to our resilience. He speaks of the harbinger in terms of Isaiah 9, 10. Then, after that, the progression, they tried to build, they put the spire up. They're going to put the spire up on the tower to complete it. The day they chose was April 29th, the same day that the cross went up on Cape Henry when America built its first, its first object on American soil, when they dedicated America to God, Cape Henry, April 29th, same day, they're going to build that, they're going to put the, the spire on the tower. But that day, the wind blows and will not, it, it will not, they will, well, the wind will not let them do it. So they can't put up the spire on April 29th. They, they put it two weeks later, it goes up. As it goes up, two things happen. That hour, the scandal breaks across America about the IRS persecuting Christians and, and pro-Israel groups. Breaks in the same hour. And that day, the sun is darkened over the tower. The sun is darkened, solar eclipse. You've got the, blood, you've got the red moon on the oh. other harbinger. You've got the sun being darkened on this harbinger. On this one, happens that way. They opened up the, the top floor. They opened up the top floor, finally, of the tower. On Friday, I believe, they opened up. Sunday comes a storm, and that top, the top of the tower that they just opened up to be completing is struck by lightning three times. Three times. In fact, we may have a picture. Wow, look at that. That was just, it was struck three times, right, right after they opened it, right after, just before we left. That tower is the completion, is the embodiment of all the harbingers, begun with that stone of judgment and, and, and coming to its head. So that's where we are right now. Now, um, one of the things I want to just, one of the things we're watching, and we're not only really watching this moral collapse in this year, but as we said, that as they call evil good, they call good evil, persecution. Listen to this statement. This is recent. Listen to the statement. Or I'll just say, deep-seated religious beliefs have to be changed. Oh. Now, that would sound like, who would say that? Joseph Stalin? I mean, a communist, you know, deep-seated, meaning the Bible, religious beliefs have to be changed. Not Joseph Stalin, the one who said it was Hillary Clinton. Oh. Just recently, running for president, she oh. said deep-seated religious beliefs have to be changed. Why did she say it has? Now, this is talking about the Bible. I don't remember any American leader ever coming to this point to be able to say something like that. The, the religious beliefs of Americans have to be changed. Why, she said, so abortion can expand. Oh, oh. my gosh. Oh. Now... Listen to this statement. This is, this is a different kind of statement. I believe marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. I have, in, my, my, in my life, I have defended marriage. It's the fundamental bedrock principle that exists between a man and a woman. It is for millennia, been ra for the raising, socializing of children, in which they're going to become a Who said that? Hillary Clinton. 
This is back She said then. that 2004. 2004, she said, it's the sacred bond of marriage. Now it is, now she says it has to be, that has to all be, cha all be changed. Uh, this is what she originally said. This is, but that shows you, this is how fast it's happening. Now, we are watching, I'm going to say, you know, very shortly, I've said it a few times, I told you that I was called to Washington. I actually stood on the steps when I saw these people in sackcloth and ashes on the day that the Supreme Court heard the case. If this goes the way, if marriage is struck down, this is gigantic. This is major gigantic, not just for, not just be concerning immorality, but also concerning persecution. Once this happens, if what is immoral becomes institutionalized, becomes legitimized, then what is moral will become delegitimized, will become persecuted. Now I mentioned something, now I'm going to bring it to David Wilkerson, but I mentioned something a few times ago where, uh, where the actual, this is ominous, but the actual White House lawyer said to the Supreme Court during that day, said that yes, if this happens, basically in effect, we will go after the religious or Christian schools. Tax exemption stripped, then it will go to the to ministries, tax exemption stripped because you're haters, according to this, if you don't go along with this, and then churches. Now listen to what, now I was looking at the vision, listen to what David Wilkerson said. Now again, he thought the timing was gonna be then, it wasn't. But listen to what he says. An antichrist spirit, this is in 1973, will enter the hearts of certain men in high places, in government and in the judicial system, causing these officials to harass independent churches, missionaries, and ministers. I see a time coming when nearly all evangelical and missionary projects, all religious radio and TV programming, all incorporated missionary societies will be so closely monitored, questioned, and badgered that they will be cautious of expanding in any area. There is coming an attempt to tax churches and church-related organizations. Atheist forces, with the help of the American Civil Liberties Union, will push the matter all the way to the Supreme Court. We will eventually have taxation of churches. It will begin as an in insignificant kind of nuisance tax, but will soon burgeon into a monster-sized tax that will push some independent churches and missionary societies near bankruptcy. Church-related businesses will be taxed first. That will soon be followed by taxation of all church-owned properties, including parsonages. Church buildings will be exempt. The IRS may one day become one of the most powerful weapons against the church. It would then be possible for government, government agencies to maintain a stranglehold on churches. Government agencies are soon going to become delving into the private books of almost every nonprofit religious organization. Those who do not comply with stringent guidelines will be forced to shut down. There will be no recourse. This is 1973. It's happening now. Yes. Happening now. Wow. Now, I want to get to something else that he said. But let's get, but that, that's linked to collapse. I want to get, so I want to touch on the Shemitah yes. and what, where it is. <clears throat> the last two cycles of the Shemitah have been the most exactly, uncannily exact. And I believe, I believe they have a clip, with just a short clip of that. If it's clip number three, I think, but it's of the last growing manifestations, if they have that. The collapse reaches its peak at the end of September 2008 with what becomes the greatest single-day crash in Wall Street history. That morning, in the New York Stock Exchange, the opening bell refuses to sound. Even Wall Street takes it as an omen. The stock market crashes over 700 points. On what date did the greatest crash in Wall Street history take place? It is September 29th, 2008. But the ancient biblical calendar holds a different name. The greatest stock market collapse in world history takes place on the 29th day of Elul, the exact day appointed from ancient times for the nullifying of the financial realm, the wiping out of financial accounts. Elul 29, the day of the Shemitah, the sign of judgment against a nation that has driven God out of its life. The judgment that specifically strikes the nation's economic and financial realm. The two greatest collapses in stock market history up to those dates each took place on the same exact day on the ancient biblical calendar. And they just happened to each take place on the precise biblical day that specifically ordained to touch the nation's financial realm and to wipe clean its financial accounts from ancient times, the day of financial nullifying. And it's not only Elul 29, but it can only be one Elul 29 in seven years that can constitute the day of the Shemitah, the day of nullification. So on which 
Elul 29. Did the greatest stock market collapse take place in the year 2008? It happened on the once in seven years Elul 29, the exact one that constitutes the day of the Shemitah and the greatest crash of 2001. When did it take place? It happened on the once in seven years of Luke 29 that also constituted the Bible's day of the Shemitah. So when all across the world, observant Jews are symbolically canceling out their debts to each other, the greatest wiping out of financial accounts in history is taking place on Wall Street and sweeping across the globe. According to the ancient mystery, the financial nullification has to take place seven years apart from the one before or after. So the two greatest financial nullifications in Wall Street history up to their dates take place seven years apart. Not only on Elul 29, but seven years apart, seven exact biblical years apart, down to the exact season, the exact month, the exact date, the exact hour, the exact minute, the exact second, the exact closing bell. No human hand in the world could have orchestrated such a thing. It required the working together of every financial transaction and interaction in the world. It even required that 9-11 had to have happened exactly when it did, as it was 9-11 that caused Wall Street to collapse in 2001 on the exact ancient appointed day. Powerful. Powerful stuff. Yeah, that's from the... That's from the Mystery of the Semita Unlocked. Unlocked. That's from the DVD. Yeah, so the, the last two are that. Now we're coming up to the next one. Now the next one's coming up. It's close. Now I, wanna, now I have to do my normal thing. Yes. And just so everybody, no, we're not saying God has to do it on the date. God has, does not have to do anything. I can come back, and it was a very nice day, and everything was, was all that. But it could, and I believe we should be ready. But either way, if it happens then or later, I believe strongly a very great shaking is coming to this nation that will involve the financial realm, economic realm, and more than that and more than that, even to changing courses of history. So it could begin here or whatever, but we need to be ready. So now when's it gonna happen? It's gonna happen, Elul 29 falls on September 13th. September 13th is Sunday, there's no market open. But the last day that the market is open, that will be frozen at this date, will be the date of 9-11. Will be the 14th anniversary, two Shemitahs from the day of 9-11. September 11th. That's Friday. Friday, just before, Coming up. before you go into a little 29, will be frozen at 9-11's number, you know, which actually happened on 9-11. 9-11 happened, the markets stopped, was frozen at 9-11, the 9-11's number, that went right into the, the Elul 29 opening next week, and it crashed from 9-11. Actually, I'm throwing this in, this is just extra, but, <laughs> but the, the, the number that was frozen for a week from 9-11 was the number, the stock market was at 9-605. That's 9, and 6 plus 5 is 11. It was, came out to 9-11. <laughs> that, was, that was the number, frozen. So it's going to be again 9-11. Now, what's going to happen on that day? Well, one thing we know is going to happen. On the day of wipeout of Lul 29, the sun will be darkened again. It will be the eclipse of the sun oh. happening on the day of wipeout, on the day of nullification, on that time. Now, I want to share something. This isn't that David Wilkerson now. Now listen, listen okay. to what he said. Okay. This, was, this was, I mean, in the vision, he talks about an economic collapse. But this is something he, I think, came out in the 90s, though. But listen to this. Very, he says, soon a European or North African or Eastern nation is going to default in its international loan. Now, I'm not, now I, we don't know this is the case, but in the news, you've got Greece going on there with this. I'm not saying it's the case. People then, are pulling their money out yeah, of the banks out of Greece. in Greece. Yeah. As yeah. we speak. Yes, that's right. I mean, they may even get a deal, but we don't know. And th then what happens with, he says, then what happens within two weeks, well, he's, he's, he said Mexico will default. About two weeks after the first country goes bankrupt, when, which money is owed to European banks, German, which is part of this whole thing, yeah. Swiss and French banks, but a second country is going to go down, probably Argentina or Brazil. Two weeks after the first country goes down, Mexico will, will default. When the banks open the next day at 9 in the morning, $15 billion an hour is going to be withdrawn from our American banks. They're going to be running our banks. The Arabs, all the Latin American countries, they're going to be running our banks. Before the day is over, the USA is going to have to declare a bank holiday. From the time the first country goes down, you'll have two weeks to get your money out of the bank. 
Now I'm going to give you a word of advice. When the first country goes bankrupt, you get every dime you have. Church, get your money out of the bank because there's going to be a bank holiday and you won't be able to get a dime for six months. Now, of course, there's going to be a, rest there's going to be a restoration, but the nation will never be as it was again. Now, I'm, this is, I'm not saying it has to be That's this is David, Dave David Wilkerson, but it's just very interesting. Mm -hmm. They're talking about defaults and things like that. I want to just touch on two things, and one is the super shmita or the juba, prophetic jubilee. Now, I don't know if you have time to do yes, it. Yes, we to, have to, time. You'll do it? Okay, it won't be Your that time much. is my um, time. Okay. All right. We have, I believe, clip number two, which is the mystery of the seventh shmita. Let's just talk because this is also, this cycle is starting shortly. It's the first time in 2,000 years that the land is being restored to the Jewish people. The year following the Shemitah was September 1917 to September 1918. The Balfour Declaration takes place in November 1917. Thus, the land is restored to the Jewish people in the year following the Shemitah corresponding to the Jubilee. It's a prophetic jubilee, and according to the mystery, the Jewish people now would return home to the land they had lost, to their father's possession, to their ancestral homeland. Everyone shall return to their possession. The mystery of the jubilee concerns the seventh Shemitah. So what happens if we move forward in time from the Shemitah of 1917, 49 years to come to the seventh Shemitah. What is the seventh Shemitah? It brings us to the Shemitah of September 1965 to September 1966. The year following the Shemitah would begin September 1966 and end September 1967. Did anything significant take place within that year and within those dates? Any event of restoration? The answer is yes. According to Bible prophecy, the Jewish people have to be restored not only to their homeland, but also to their ancient holy city of Jerusalem. In the midst of the Six-Day War, Israeli soldiers enter the Lion's Gate of the biblical city of Jerusalem. Through gunfire, they make their way to the holiest site in Judaism, the Western Wall. There they weep, and after 2,000 years, the Jewish people are restored to their ancient capital, Jerusalem. It happens on June 7, 1967, within the parameters of the year ending in September 1967, the year following the seventh Shemitah, the Jubilee. The seventh Shemitah had ushered in the second restoration of the land. According to the mystery of the seventh Shemitah, the Jewish people had returned to what they lost 2,000 years before, Jerusalem. They had regained their long lost possession and returned to their ancestral home. The two great restorations of the land each happened according to the mystery. The Bible ordains that in the year of the Jubilee, the shofar, the ram's horn, is to be sounded. The first thing that happens after the soldiers reached the Temple Mount in 1967 is that the ram's horn is sounded from the Temple Mount, the sound of the Jubilee. The man who sounds it is Rabbi Shlomo Goren. Rabbi Goren was born in the year 1917, the time of the other restoration. When he sounds the shofar, he is 50 years old, the number of the Jubilee. The mystery of the Shemitah lies behind the two great end time restorations of Israel's lands. Now the pattern and cycle does not have to continue, but if it did, what would be the seventh Shemitah from the last restoration? The seventh Shemitah begins September 2014, goes to September 2015. The year following the seventh Shemitah is that of September 2015 to September 2016. While the cycle doesn't have to continue and nothing significant has to take place, in the last two occurrences, it has meant war in the Middle East, war in the land of Israel, and a war resulting in a prophetic restoration. Wow.
I show this for this reason, that it's not only the climax of the Shemitah, it's also the beginning of what you could call the Super Shemitah, or the prophetic Jubilee. Now, again, we don't put God in a box. He doesn't have to do anything, but what it has meant is war. What it has meant is a change in Israel. This is massive. When you take these two things, 1917 was the land. 1967 was Jerusalem. Now what's next? So if this, we have to be ready in either way. So we got all, talk about convergences. We've got all, everything we just said, everything, change, and we have a potential change in world history, even prophecy. It doesn't have to, but I would be ready. Wow. So that, that is from the, the mystery of the Shemitah unlocked. Let me just share one more quick point. And that is that, and this is from, on the, in the teachings, it's the days of the watchmen. We are called in this day to be watchmen. Yes. We have, must be the watchmen. And just some keys to be, I give the keys about how to be a watchman. But the key is this, no matter who you are, man, woman, child, doesn't matter. We are called to be watchmen, we must stay on the walls. In other words, we must stay on the ramparts. In other words, we cannot get so wrapped up in the world. We cannot get wrapped up in all the details if we're going to hear from God. The watchmen have to look. They have to stay above the city. We have to stay above what's happening. We have to be in God's presence in order to, to be the watchmen we're supposed to be. We have to be on the watchtower. We have to stay in the presence of God or we cannot be watchmen. And we have to be looking. The watchmen look into the distance. They don't, they don't look at everything around. They look into the distance. They look into what's coming. They are ready to what they are looking that way. The watchmen... They are acting at night. Things get dark, that's their hour. That's their hour. We can't fear the, the darkness because God called us for the darkness. God called us to be strong. We, the watchmen, once they see something, they have to sound that shofar. We have to not be silent. We must sound the alarm. The one of the first times I came here, I went to Branson Airport, and I'm leaving, and I'm thinking, Lord, you know, this is a heavy message. You know, why do you have me doing this? Stuff? And I open up the Bible. It's, he bombards me, son of man, when, I, when danger is coming, if the watchman does not sound the alarm, I will hold him accountable. I've, I've called you to do this. You must, we are all watchmen. We must sound the alarm. God has called us to be faithful on the walls. And faithful, and that means we have to be in the presence of God. He will not only keep us, but we will be strong for this hour. God has called us for this hour that is coming. Please yeah. make sure that you're, you're ready. Make sure that you have food. Make sure you have... Uh, we don't know... What's coming, we know, well, I really know what's coming according to the mm -hmm, Bible. Mm -hmm. And it's a time we know food to eat and all the things and all the earthquakes and all. But we don't know the dates and everything. But all we do is know that Just be the time has come. Yeah. Be the time prepared. has come of all yes. the events taking yeah. place, all yes. converging right now. Yes. The blood moons, all of it. Mm. Warning, 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 warning. The greatest warning, the greatest signs in the heavens are declaring it. So... You can call or you can go to our website. Just and go to jimbakershow.com or write us today at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Or call 1-888-988-1588. The greatest investment is food. Gold, they tell me, is cra going to crash. Did you hear that, John? The Bible says they're going to throw gold and silver in the streets. I don't know. I'm not an expert on gold, but I know this. You can't eat it. We're going to need bulk foods yes. so that we can take recipes yes. and, and dip into this bucket, dip into this bucket and that bucket yeah. and create our dishes. I mean, we talk about the bullion over there. Yes. The store bullion, chicken bullion, is the base for making soup. That's true. So it's like <laughs> you get multiple oh, cans yes. of bullion, chicken bullion, yeah. and multiple buckets of rice, yes. and then you've got food from your garden, and when the garden food doesn't come in, you've got your vegetables in the buckets, right. and you live and the onions and the salt and everything uh, you need, yeah. so uh, that yeah. you're dipping into this, this, and this, and you created this big, big container yes. of soup that you can feed multiple wow. people with. And it didn't come from a little box of soup or a right. little can of soup. Exactly. You created as big a oh, concoction yeah. as you needed. This is uh, that's all, all purpose, purpose flour. flour. This is fifty dollars, and that's that is ten years of flour. But if you have the flour, and then you have over here, we have sugar, six gallons of white granulated sugar, forty pounds. Forty pounds. It's for a donation of seventy-five dollars to the ministry. Okay, and then we have rolled oats. Well, rolled oats, you can actually eat them as oatmeal, which we've all... It's cereal. Oats, cereal, uh, hot or cold. 
We whole can make grain. cookies out of them if we're using flour and sugar, and we're making oatmeal cookies now. Oh, yes. The uh, brown rice is 423 servings for $60, but it has a shelf life because of the oil in it of seven years. I tell you what, rice is going to be your friend. John has told us this and told us this. If you cook this, this one bucket, and look at what you get. Yes. All of this was made from this bucket. That's, That's right. amazing. 20. Really amazing. John, this oh is 20 gallons. And the thing is, with the rice, I, if you were needing to feed a lot of people, mm -hmm. I would just throw some rice in there. Exactly. That's yes. what John said. He said the rice is the, what would you call it, John? Food multiplier. Food let's, let's multiplier. Let's get that in our terminology, everybody. Food multiplier. In my opinion, anybody that has the, the, the sampler foods, the six month, the year, the two year, the time of trouble, mm -hmm. everybody needs these rice buckets yeah. because they can extend the life of the food for months and months. Yeah. So really, whenever you have a year of food, if you have several buckets of rice, it could be a two years of food. Uh, beans, beans are good. They're protein. Protein, yes. There's the lentil beans, and that's for a donation also for $100 to the ministry. Okay. Then we have the country fresh 100% whole milk. That's for a donation of $145 to the ministry. The vegetable stew blend for a donation of $100. The potato dices for a donation of $60. The potato slices for a donation of $60. Uh, dehydrated apple slices for a donation of $150. Uh, the wheat hard red for a donation of $40. The potato soup is for a donation of $160. This is totally dehydrated. And hot, we just made it. <laughs> Dear God, it's good. The soup comes in six gallons of this. It weighs almost 50 pounds. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's 20 gallons. That's how much it's supposed to make. It's 20 gallons. Yes. You're not just buying a bucket of soup. You're getting 20 gallons of soup. And we're going to be putting all of the foods on our website, even foods that we haven't talked about. They're all going to be on our website at jimbakershow.com. And if you yes. go to our website, we even have right. butter. No. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Right on the website. There's yeah. so many things on the web store, so you make sure you go there because there's all web-exclusive offers on there that yeah. we aren't able to show on the show, but, but we have now, it on there. You need to go and shop on our, our website because right. that's where... Uh, the food is. You can. There's pictures of it. And call 